C++ Builder Starter is a great way to get started building high-performance C++ applications for Windows. C++ Builder Starter includes a streamlined IDE, integrated debugger, two-way visual designers, and hundreds of visual components. Let's take a look at some of the capabilities and things you can build with C++ Builder Starter. Let's create a starting app, and we've got the project up here in the project window, and we can start adding components and doing programming in C++11. So let's add a button. Let's add an edit box and we'll add a list box and finally a label. We can use the visual design surface to lay out the components. We can also use layouts and other design capabilities to create great looking user interfaces. We'll use the object inspector. We'll change the text on the button to click me. So what I'm going to do in this quick sample is have an event handler on the on click method for the button and I'm going to take that contents of the edit box and I'm going to add it to the list box. So we can do that two ways. We could double click on the button or we can go to the object inspector and click on its on click event handler. And this is where the programming starts. What we'll do is we'll say list box. It has a property called items and we'll call the add method. The add method will take a string, the edit one, its text property, and we'll add the contents that we type in at runtime to the list box. And we'll also take the same text in the edit box and store it in the label. Now we're ready to build our application and run it on Windows. We'll click the Run button. It'll compile our application, and here's the user interface. We'll type in some text in the edit box, click the button, and see that the text in the edit box has appeared in the list box and also in the label. So you've written your first C++ application in C++ Builder Starter. Let's take a look at some of the other types of C++ applications you can build. I've got a 3D application here. It's got two 3D spheres, one which has a bitmap for the Earth, and one that has a bitmap that is the surface of Mars. We do that by using a material source associated with a bitmap to the surface of the sphere. We can see up in the structure window that we've got the two spheres. They're inside of a container, which is of type T-Dummy. It's just a 3D container for 3D objects. I've got a camera, and the camera is the viewpoint to look at the planets. That's all housed inside of a 3D viewport, which allows us to put a 3D scene into a two-dimensional application. We've got a couple toolbars, one with the labels at the top, uh, a switch component for turning on and off the rotation of the two spheres. We've got a track bar at the bottom so that I can change how I'm viewing the 3D scene that's inside of the 3D viewport. Now behind all this, we've got some code, and the code says if I turn on the switch, I'm going to enable the animation, which is the rotation of the two planets, animation one and animation two. And as I change the track bar, I'm going to change the camera's position, Z-axis, that goes into and out of the screen based on the track bar value. The final point in the design is this float animation component. And I've set its start and stop values to be a rotation in one direction, going from 0 to minus 360. And I've got the loop property set to true for Earth and for Mars. So here's my 3D application. Here's the Earth. Here's Mars. The track bar will move the position of the camera. So now we've flown past the two planets and now we're flying back again. Turn on the switch and watch them start to rotate. Move the track bar to fly by the planets and see that they're still rotating. So it's very cool and very easy to build a 3D application. As I mentioned, we also support the full C++11 language in our compiler in C++ Builder Starter. So you can learn the new capabilities of modern C++. This is a sample application that's going to calculate prime numbers. And it's also using the parallel programming library that's part of the C++ runtime that we deliver in C++ Builder Starter. I've got two buttons in the user interface. One that's going to run a regular sequential for loop to find all the prime numbers. And the second button is going to use the parallel programming library to find the prime numbers by portioning out parts of a for loop into multiple cores if you have a multi-core processor. So let's look at the code behind the first button, iterating through a for loop, calling a function is prime. Is prime is just going to brute force loop through, and then it's going to tell us that a certain number is a prime number. And if it is prime, we'll increment this variable code tote. This button, we're going to do the same thing, find 
the number of primes in the first 50,000 numbers. In this case, we're going to use the parallel programming libraries for method. We're going to pass it the start and stop numbers from 1 to 50,000. And then we're going to use a C++ Lambda to call the same function is prime and then increment the number of primes found by using this T interlocked class to increment the value so that in the multi-core system, only one of those cores will be able to access the variable TOT at one time. Let's take a look at this application in action. We'll call the for loop, and it said it took uh, 420 milliseconds, and it found 5,134 primes. We'll call the same function is prime inside of a parallel for loop. It took 25% of the time, 109 milliseconds. It found the same number of primes. So using the C++11 language, and C++ Builder Starter's parallel programming library, we can build responsive user interfaces and do parallel programming. And then I just wanted to show one more example of the cool user experience that you can develop using C++ Builder Starter. This is the T split view component. The split view component allows you to have a, a control panel of buttons and text on the left-hand side that can open and close, unveiling the rest of your user interface under the covers. So let's run this split view demo. We click on the hamburger icon. It brings out the split view using animation. If you want it to just pop out, then uh, you can turn off animation. Again, under the covers, all this is doing is setting different properties of the split view component. If we want the compact view, then we still see the icons showing up there versus it collapsing. Again, the split view can be placed on the right or the left, and we can have different looks. For example, Iceberg Classico, Windows 10 Blue, Windows 10 Dark. So you can have those modern looking Windows applications using C++ Builder Starter. So to sum it all up, you can write all the sophisticated C++11 code you want and easily build native code applications with rich user interfaces in both 2D and 3D. You can build Windows look and feel applications, including the modern Windows styles of Windows 10. And then you can upgrade to our professional or enterprise editions to cross compile the same code to iOS and Android using the exact same source code. And with a few add-ons, you can scale your applications to powerful mobile, multi-tier, cross-platform, and cloud-based applications without having to rewrite your code. You can get started learning C++11 today and visually build cool-looking Windows applications in seconds. Get started today with C++ Builder Starter.